hope I get something there. Okay, there you go. I'm watching that channel. Gakanaro. Video, YouTube's dirty little secret. Video vigilante. He's talking about how a YouTuber, Mumkey, got completely booted off the platform. Because Mumkey was being satirical, parodistic, satire, parody, and sarcastic about, uh, what's the fellow's name, Elliot Rogers? And to be quite honest, if, <laughs> if you're going to look at that, that fellow... Elliot, that is, and you're going to break down what problems led him to do what he did, then you got to do it without the satire, without the parody, without the sarcasm. Because mental health issues, they're not something to make fun of unless you're making fun of someone you've been friends with for a very long time and they understand that you're just yanking their chain, turning their crank, taking the piss, being a pl complete fucking plunking cunt. That covers about three countries worth of idioms. Those words I used. Being a plunker, taking the piss, being a cunt, that covers England, Britain, and, uh, what's the other one? Nope, wait, it covers four. Scotland and Ireland. They call their friends cunts over there, and that's a term of endearment. Now, that little side note aside, I'd like to analyze just a couple of seconds worth of the video clips that Gokanu showed in his video. And from what I saw, and from the understanding I have of some points and aspects of psychology and psychiatrics, it appears to me, in my limited view and limited knowledge of the subject matter at hand, <laughs> um, Let's see, what subject matter does this video include? Uh, the stages of development as observed by Sigmund Freud. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Girls develop daddy issues in the third stage of development. And... Guys are more typically to develop maternal issues. It's it's a switcheroo there. I don't know why. Hadn't figured it out myself. Hadn't researched or looked into it. But it looks like Elliot developed some severe psychological and emotional attachment issues or mommy issues during one of the early... Either the second or third stage in his psychological and emotional development. Which led to a, a lack of self-confidence, a lack of proper self-assertion and moderation. Um, a lack of uh, insight into himself. Uh, retro or introspection. Probably a little bit of both, but more heavily on introspection, which is uh, taking the time to analyze oneself. So, with that being said, and there are some people even on YouTube who aren't like licensed or doctorate degree level psychologists or psychiatric professionals who can tell you a lot more about these things than I can. But from what I saw, and listen to the tone and demeanor of the fellow's voice. It seemed like he had some pretty 
big issues going on with his psychiatric development and his emotional stability. Which in itself indicates that society in part is the problem because the, the way a child is raised and develops into maturity leads into their interactions with the rest of everyone else around them. It's not limited to just people. It's not limited to just humans. His, his outlook on uh, interacting with members of the opposite sex was incredibly warped due mostly to early childhood trauma. Now, what trauma that was, I'm not even going to speculate. I have no information to go on. It's not my place to go and speculate and say these are the possibilities because I just don't know. But, what I can do is say his lack of self-confidence is something I can talk about. Low self-esteem. Lack of confidence in yourself. Uh, lack of self-worth, self-value, whatever else you want to throw in there as a synonym. These problems develop in childhood from either a neglectful or an abusive environment. Most of the time, that's where those come from. And at a certain stage of emotional and psychological development. Either he was neglected or he was abused when he was young. And the fact, or rather the truth, because I don't deal in fact, so just forget I said fact. The truth of the matter that most of American society views a male, no matter what race you're from, as some thing to be abused, ordered around, enslaved, etc., etc., without valuing that male's emotional and psychological needs. And yes, males do have those. Not just in the human species, but in every species. It seems, from what I know, that he wasn't valued enough which, you know, hence the abuse or neglect, or both, that led to his view on members of the opposite sex. Well, I've broken down and analyzed what little information I have. I know a few small things, a couple of seemingly insignificant steps that can diverge from that line of continuance. And I've ragged on a uh, person on Xbox Live about this, so I'll rag on him again. Yeah, it's you, Vittable. The thing is, first and foremost, to give a fuck, at least in the metaphorical terminology of giving a fuck about your fellow living being, regardless of gender, age, species, etc. That's the first part. It's a very small thing, but it diverges from that horrible line of continuance that actually happened in reality. It starts off small, but then it grows. So the first thing is to give a fuck, to care. And I've made a video talking about overpopulation being a problem leading to valueless lives. 
Eliot's problem is systemically linked and integrated into that problem as a systemic symptom. But that link is borderline irrelevant for this video's topic and subject matter. Another step that you can take to diverge from cruel reality continuance beyond caring about your fellow living being is to take the time to study points of psychiatric and psychological interest. Interest isn't the right word because some people aren't interested, but they need to know these things anyway in order to help the people they care about. So, research material instead of interest. I just happen to be interested in psychology and psychiatrics. Once you start studying, apply the tool of observation. It's difficult to find a balance to uh, observe and then to interact. It's very difficult when you start off. Because if you interact and you don't do so patiently and you don't plan to say the right things to help someone become more stabilized emotionally and psychologically and mentally yes those three those three things psychologically mentally and emotionally they are interwoven and connected they're very similar <clears throat> yet at the same time they're three separate things they're just really interwoven so they seem like the exact same thing so you have to nudge and coax somebody to become introspective, to analyze themselves with your interactions. Which could also be a summary point of this video, couldn't it? Or secondary, or tertiary point of this video, to inspire people to think introspectively. And uh, something you shouldn't do to throw in with the things that you should do is don't project. Don't compare yourself to other people. All that does is emotionally, psychologically distance people from you. It's the equivalent of physically pushing someone away very gently. When you compare yourself to them, uh, fuck's sake. Let me give you an example. My parents always used to. They, they've stopped doing it. They've learned a few bits and things along the way. But they always used to say, when I was your age, blah, blah, blah. Up until the point where I told my mom, look, the rising cost of living means that that same amount that you were wait making back then, you know, that $5 an hour that we, we get now, it doesn't mean shit. So when you were my age, you had a car, you had a, an apartment or a, a place you were renting. Yeah, I, I'm getting the exact same amount of money you were getting back then, and the rising cost of living is quadruple what it, it was back then. Here, take a look at the rent prices right now. How much were you paying in rent back then? Look at the difference. You can't keep comparing yourself to me. There's no comparison. It doesn't work anymore. That was uh, what I said to my mom at that point. Way back when, several years ago, that caused some introspection in her. But at the same time, it was more blunt, more blatant, more direct. Because, hey, we know each other. She knows I'm trying to get a point across, and I'm being blunt about it. 
so that she understands how severe the issue really is. If I were going to go and talk to Elliot after uh, seeing his YouTube video and, and if I were his uh, friend or neighbor at the time, I'd have been like, let's just go get drunk and do something stupid. Which I can summarize as D, distraction. For those of you who've watched Mike Myers' uh, The Love Guru, you'll understand. Drama! <laughs> it's, a, it's a good tool. If you learn to uh, analyze and break down drama. Distraction, regression, adjust, maturity, action. So first, it would have helped to get him distracted. And then, then the regression. That's a psychological tool where the psychiatrist would talk about your childhood. Get you to go back in your memory, and your mind, to that state of emotional and psychological development that you were in. So that they could then adjust your behavior by having you introspectively look at yourself and decide this, a this action led to this outcome. So, if I do the same action now, it'll have the same outcome as before, or at least very similar. Then you lead in from that, and yeah, that was a horrible example to all of you psychiatric professionals out there, I know, into maturity, where you adjust the way they think. Well, actually, no, you don't do anything. You provide the, uh, the tool to help them adjust the way they think. To change from this linear progression into thinking, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? How do I get to here where I want to be from right here where I am? Stuff like that. Basic, basically, patience, introspection, and mindfulness. Those are the psychological, emotional tools that you're trying to help them develop and then after practice and uh, helping them develop those tools so that they can do that to themselves then you help them put it all into action you go forth and you let go you let them take control of what they're going to do. And America has a severe problem with trying to control everyone else around them. Being immature and controlling everyone else around you. That's not good. That's immature. It's horrible. It's stupid. It's infantile. There's, it's just purely a corrupt thing. Trying to control someone else is just puerile corruption. So you, you let people go off and practice and put into action the emotional, mental, and psychological tools that you're attempting to impart to them. But I definitely would have just started with the distraction of getting drunk and doing something completely stupid. Not in the uh, extremist sense that he did. How would that situation go? Do something stupid and fun that he might enjoy. Regardless of if I enjoy it or not. <clears throat> Even if it was fucking Call of Duty multiplayer. Ugh. Even if it was that. Would have done it anyway. Then. Once he stopped thinking of the immediate thing of revenge. Then 
attempt to do the regression very small amount very moderately to extremely small amount get him talking about how he feels where his mindset's at what he's thinking patiently though that would take some time and possibly more distraction <clears throat> Then get him going on further into the regression. Well, that could take a while. That could take days. Get the information that I would need to help him adjust his thought process, his emotional state. And at that point, I really can't continue with this train of thought. Because, big point, first and foremost, I don't know anything about the fellow. I really don't. Don't know his history, don't know his childhood. That's information that I would need in order to help him. To impart the tools of introspection and self-analysis and adjusting his own behavioral and psychological patterns to him. So I can't even go any further. And I honestly would enjoy it greatly if everyone, literally everyone, understood these tools and processes and how to use them for the betterment of themselves and everyone else around them. Then I wouldn't get little bitches like Vitable harassing me. That's right, you stream sniping lying cunt. And I don't mean that in the affectionate way. I am better than you, Vitable. I'm going to continue ragging on you. Because I want to break your psychology. Also, throughout this entire video, me imparting the tools of introspection is clearly there. So whether or not anyone wants to use them is their choice. I can't do it for you. I'm not going to hold your hand. Not my job. No accolades, no payment is rendered for this service. Hell, I don't even get paid to make a YouTube video. Also, it's blatantly apparent that uh, that fellow, Elliot, was... Uh, he was lacking in self-esteem massively. He looks better than me. He looks better than I've ever looked. So, helping someone build up their self-esteem, that would have helped a lot. Uh, there's numerous other points I could go on about, but I think this video is long enough. And a lot of people just don't have the, the patience to sit through an entire thing like this. Whether I'm pointing out everything that's required or not, yeah, there's a lot more to it. What I've talked about is just half a percent. Well, until next time.